In my last video, I explained why you should build a rain garden. You'll be helping the environment and saving water. This video is all about the how. I'm going to show you exactly how to build that rain garden with one exception. I've decided to take all the information about the plants, selecting them and planting them, and putting that into a separate video, which I'll do next week. I'll put a link at the end of this one to all my rain garden videos. And I'll throw in a few about ponds as well. The first thing you need to do is to pick a location. Have a look around your house and figure out where the water comes from. It could be from a hill or a sloped driveway, but for most people, the greatest amount of water comes from their downspouts. Follow the path of the water. A great place for a rain garden is right along this natural flow of water. If you don't know your landscape very well, you could wait for a heavy rain and go outside and watch the water move around your property. You may also have a swale on your property. That's a ditch for collecting water, and these usually lead away from the property. Many of these end up going out to the street. You can incorporate the swale as part of your rain garden, or you might use it for the overflow. Selecting a low spot on the property is always a good idea because that's where water collects anyways, and it means less digging. It is easier to build a rain garden on flat ground, but it can be built on a slope, provided that the ground slopes away from the house. You don't want to direct any of this water back to the house. The rain garden can even be on top of an existing pathway, but then you'll have to build a bridge to cross it. And that can become a really nice architectural feature of the garden. For practical reasons, many rain gardens are located close to one or two downspouts. It is important to keep all parts of the rain garden at least 10 feet or 3 meters away from the house. It should be even further away from any septic systems, and many sources suggest a distance of 18 feet. The next thing to decide is the size of the rain garden. Ideally, it's large enough so that when it rains and you get one inch of rain over a 12 hour period, that your rain garden is large enough to collect all of that water. Now to figure that out, you need to know where this rain is coming from. And for most of you, it will be the roof of the house. So we have to calculate the area of the roof that's gonna supply this water. Now the roof that we're talking about here is usually a rectangular area. So that makes the calculations easy. You can get the length of one side of this area by measuring the length of the house plus the overhang. For the second side, you can estimate it or you can count roof tiles. In North America, the exposed area of a standard shingle is five inches. The number of rows multiplied by 5 will give you the distance in inches. Divide that by 12 to get feet. The area collecting rain is calculated by multiplying the length and width together. The size of the rain garden should be one-tenth of this number. Let's look at an example. Let's say the roof area for one downspout is 600 square feet. Then the area of the rain garden should be 60 square feet. Now these numbers are not that exact. For example, the garden may be an oval shape. And in that case, just ignore the corners and assume that it's a square. These numbers are also based on a one inch rain event. You may never get that where you live, or you may get larger events. You can also make the rain garden larger or smaller than the calculated size. That might help you fit it in the space that you have. In any case, we will add an outlet to ensure that any excess water is directed where you want it. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Even a small rain garden is better than no rain garden. So if you can't make it the size you need, make it smaller, but fit one into your garden. Now, what about the depth of the garden? We want to aim for a finished depth in the center of the garden of one foot. Now you're going to slope the sides of the garden so it will be more shallow near the edge and deeper in the center. If you tend to get heavy rain events, 
like more than one inch, or if you're making it smaller than the calculated size, you can make it deeper and that will allow it to hold more water. What about the shape of the rain guard? Well, the most convenient shape is an oval. It just works well and there's the least amount of work, but that doesn't look very exciting in a garden. What about a teardrop shape? Bigger at one end, smaller at the other. Or maybe for your space, what you really need is a long, skinny one. And maybe it meanders around and even goes around the side of the house. If you like that formal look, make it a square. The shape of the rain garden doesn't matter. Pick a shape that you like and one that fits into the space and landscape that you have. Shape is all about aesthetics, not functionality. Now let's plan the inlet and the outlet. Both of these are critical. The inlet is usually a narrow strip that goes from the source, the downspout, to the rain garden. It can be straight or curved. The purpose of the inlet is to direct all of the water away from the house and into the rain garden. It's important that the inlet slopes away from the house. If the current soil level does not slope that way, you can create that slope when you build the rain garden. But to be honest, a natural slope means less digging. The outlet is just as critical and it's usually forgotten. What happens when you get a really heavy rain and the rain garden is full? Or maybe it rains daily for a week. Where does all this extra water go? If you have an outlet, you decide where the extra water goes. If you don't have an outlet, then the water goes wherever it wants, but it usually seeks a low spot and it may not be where you want. The outlet is usually put in at the far end of the rain garden opposite from where the inlet is, and it is directed to a safe spot away from your house and the neighbors. If at all possible, point it to the street. There it can't do any damage. Now let's think about plants. Many of the best plants for a rain garden like sun, or at least part shade. So pick this type of site if at all possible. But if the only spot you have is a shady spot, that's okay too. You just have to pick the right plants for the spot you have. More on plants in my next video. Now that your basic design is finished, it's time to do some digging. But before we do that, there's one more thing you have to do. Request a utility locate for your area. Now most municipalities will send someone out to check for underground utilities, and it's usually a free service. At least it is here. You don't want to start digging and find electrical cables or gas pipes. Now that you're sure the area is safe to work in, mark the approximate shape of the garden. You can use short sticks, you can use paint and paint the area. Some people use a garden hose or do what I do and simply lay a few stones on the ground to make the shape. It's time to start digging. First thing to do is to remove the sod. Now you're going to have to dig out a fair amount of soil. What are you going to do with that soil? Is there any other place on the property you can use that? Maybe you have a low spot you want to raise up. Maybe you're building some raised beds and you can use it in there. If you can't use that soil, you're going to have to get rid of it. If you post that on the social media sites, someone will probably come and get that soil from you. If you are building the garden on a slope, you will need some or all of the excess soil at the low end so that you can build up that area. You need to end up with the rain garden where all of the edges are level. Otherwise, it just won't hold water. Water will always run out at the lowest point. As you dig, slope the sides towards the center. A gradual slope will make it a lot easier for planting later on and it helps keep the mulch in place. An easy way to do this is to start digging in the middle of the pot. Dig down six inches and then start moving out from there. And then go back and dig the center deeper and move out from there. That way you'll ensure a good slope. Once the center is one foot deep, it's time to check for drainage and soil quality. 
The goal here is to create a garden that dries up in about 48 hours, but it can certainly hold water longer than that. To figure out how well your soil drains, you can do something called a soil perk test. And I have a video to show you how to do that. Using the results from the perk test, you can calculate how quickly your garden will drain. If it drains in 48 hours or less, you don't have to do anything special to the soil in the bottom of the garden. If it doesn't drain in 48 hours, consider digging it a little deeper and replacing the extra soil with soil that has been amended with sand. That will help with drainage. But to be honest, you can just let the water sit longer than 48 hours and skip the extra work. When mosquitoes lay eggs, it takes about a week for them to go through their cycle and hatch out. So you don't want the water sitting there for seven days or longer. What about your soil quality? Remember that we want to plant this area. Is the soil good enough for plants? If it's pure sand, consider amending it with some clay and organic matter. If it is very heavy clay, amend with sand and some organic matter. If it's just poor quality subsoil, just amend with organic matter. In any event, when you are finished adjusting the soil, the depth at the center should be about one foot deep. Now let's build the inlet. I like to create a riverbed between the source of the water and the edge of the rain garden. I generally dig a shallow trough that is about six inches deep, but one that slopes from the source to the rain garden. I like to line this with plastic and then I cover it with fist sized rocks. The rocks do two things. They hold down the plastic and they slow down the movement of water. If you don't like the aesthetic look of this, you can also use a pipe and bury it in the ground and you won't see the inlet. Before going further, test the inlet. Pour some water into it. Make sure everything is flowing well and that it empties out completely into the rain garden. That way you know you've got the slope right. All right, the inlet's done. Now it's time to make an outlet. Look around the perimeter of your rain garden and decide where you want excess to flow out. That's where you put the outlet. It can be built exactly like the inlet. Just make it look like a little riverbed with rocks. You can also create simpler outlets. You can just take the low part of your rain garden, put a few rocks there to make sure that the rain won't wash the soil away, and just let the excess water run onto your lawn or maybe into a garden. You can also have that outlet go into a swale and that automatically will take the water away from your property. The important thing with an outlet is that the water goes in the right direction and goes away from your house and the neighbor so nothing gets damaged. In most cases, the plastic layer is not needed on the outlet side because it's not as critical to keep water from seeping into the soil. Now, except for the plants and some aesthetic features, your rain garden is finished. So I'll deal with the plants in my next video. And when it's done, I'll add it to the link in the right hand corner to all the rain garden videos. What about aesthetic features? Let's make this garden a little more interesting. I like to add large rocks in the center along the edge. How about a little bridge, some artwork, a bird feeder, if you're interested in natural ponds, which are great to add to your rain garden, have a look at my book, Building Natural Ponds, or join our Facebook group, Building Natural Ponds. See you in the next video.